Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff, you know, uh, that would be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. All right, I think this is a 2010 Chevrolet Camaro. Got the wheel off, obviously. If you take off your wheel and you see this, I bet this video is going to work for you. And it's a fairly basic disc brake system. Caliper, caliper mount, brake rotor. The brake pads are inside here. Got two bolts basically holding this on. Two bolts holding this on. <clears throat> for me, it's a 14 millimeter for this and then a 15 millimeter uh, for the caliper mounting bracket. Not sure what this is, maybe a 17 millimeter, but just have a nice set of sockets and wrenches are available and you could probably be able to do this. Torque wrench, <clears throat> 22 millimeter lug nuts on this baby here. So let's see what am I using here. Light, air ratchet, uh, torque, what is that, a T30? T30 torque bit, got a little impact gun, 3 its ratchet, impact gun, 22 millimeter socket, little wire wheel brush for cleaning up the caliper mounts as needed, 13 and 14 and 15, well, 14 and 15 millimeter ratchet wrenches as needed. So, uh, okay, so we're going to loosen up the lug nuts, a turn or two, then go up and jack up the vehicle, protect yourself. Got some good metal here, you can jack up on underneath here as well. Pinch weld running along here. So jack up the vehicle, use safety stands, protect yourself, and turn the lug nuts off the rest of the way. Pull it off, here's what you see. T30 Torx bit, all bolts are left to loosen right to tighten. You take that out, and then we'll take out the two bolts here, off of the caliper. Although I bet on this one you can take the lower one off and then you can just tilt this up. Don't need to take this one out, but you can. Now I'm going to like to get in here with a screwdriver and collapse the piston and check the slides. The other side actually didn't work as well, collapsing the piston. And I opened up the bleeder screw here, 10 millimeter. Again, left to loose and right to tighten. Open it up and then the piston collapse pretty darn nice. So I think we'll be okay. Anyhow, so I'm going to stick a screwdriver in here and pry. So you get the screwdriver actually coming through here. There we go. Maybe that's actually screwed up, I think. How about that? collapsing on the rotor the wrong way so anyway now you can check your slides your piston collapse nicely there's your slides look at that real nice are we out of focus again here there we go but the caliper slides real nice so our slides are good piston collapsed we're good to go to take things apart without really worrying about needing a caliper and that's what I would do before you go too much further make sure those things are working Otherwise, you need to pick up yourself maybe some uh, new calipers. Bolt sizes don't matter that much because when you watch this video, maybe your car, the caliper has been changed once or twice. And the bolt sizes may have changed. And we can just swing this baby up and slide out the pin. Kind of like that. We put some lubricant on it. Lubricate, lubricate the other one. Use a large seat clamps, uh, seat clamp or channel locks to collapse the piston a little more as needed. I think this one's sticking out just a little bit more. Just collapse it till it's uh, flush or bottoms out. Good to go there. Brake pads just kind of slide out of place. Yep, 
inner brake pad, squealer, the top, friction fit pieces just gonna fit in place. You just clean these up or replace them if you get brake pads. Sometimes they come with a hardware kit. You can buy the pads with the hardware. So consider that. We'll just clean this stuff up. And we have our uh, two 15 millimeter bolts in the back. I misspoke, they're actually 13 millimeter, but again, size doesn't matter as much. Just uh, take them out. Ooh. Probably has some Loctite on it. You could pick up uh, for yourself some blue Loctite as a good all around Loctite product to uh, secure bolts as needed. <clears throat> Though with a proper torque or a little above the proper torque, I'm sure bolts will not just fall out on their own. And the rotor should just slide off. More we'll tap it with a hammer. Emergency brake shoes are inside here. Recommend machining or replacing your rotors as needed. In almost every brake video I say if money's super tight though, you could just throw a set of brake pads down there and be on your way. Uh, doing that can cause brake noise. And or if there's a warpage of the brake rotor it's still going to be there and you'll have some brake pedal pulsation and if it's the front brake you probably have some steering wheel shaking as well <clears throat> give these a little cleaning with some brake clean Lubricant on there. Back in the hole. All right, got the rotor on, got the torx bit back in. Probably like 89 inch pounds or 100 inch pounds, something like that. Just make it tight. And uh, although if you lost it, it wouldn't be a big deal. Many rotors don't have uh, anything holding it on. Got a new hardware. Snug them down uh, with the Torx spec in a little bit. The brake pads in here. Drop the little groove.
Work the lube a little bit. Put a bolt in. Oh. Well, it looks like for me it is a 17 millimeter for that scalper slide. There, slipping on me. Mm. That is replacing your rear brake pads, rear brake rotor on your 2010 and other model years, I'm sure. Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, we'll go to the master cylinder and talk about that in the brake fluid a little bit. And I'll give you some torque specs. All right, so they say 30 foot pounds for this bracket plus 90 degrees. And for this, they say 20 foot pounds. For these little bolts and 140 foot pounds for the lug nuts so these bolts back here are probably close to 90 foot pounds if you don't have a angle wrench so just tighten up tight and they probably won't go anywhere use a little loctite on them so you tighten these bolts in a crisscross pattern put the tire on tighten them as tight as you can up in the air and then put it on the ground and finish it off all right, I just want to note that the rotor I put on is a coated rotor to help protect against the elements. Like if you're in the rust belt or on the coasts where salt is an issue, and eat stuff up. So maybe get a coated rotor, kind of nice, take it out of the box, put it on. Otherwise, if you get a regular rotor, there's probably a little oil, anti-rusting oil on it. You want to wash that off with some maybe some warm soap and water. Rinse it off with some water, dry it off with a towel of some kind. Should be good to go. It does have a... Uh, little emergency brake shoes on the inside so just kind of make sure you wash in there as well just want to note about the uh, rotors all right so here's the brake master cylinder so it has a maximum on the side probably a minimum as well so pump the brake pedal a few times so everything is set and then you can just check your brake fluid make sure it's uh Within range, it's fairly clear. You could maybe use a flashlight to shine it through and you can see the fluid better. So it looks to be in good shape. Of course, when you collapse the pistons, fluid comes back up. Just a matter of taking it off, put it on. So here you go. Give it a little shake. We can see the fluid is right here, just below the maximum, which is good. As I said, pump the brake pedal a few times, check your fluid. Uh, pump it before you give it to anyone because you could possibly have no brakes for the first couple pumps until they set the uh, pistons in the back there with the pads and everything. So, all right, 3.6 liter V6 Chevy Camaro rear brake pad replacement.